This Simple History episode is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a highly immersive RPG experience for your smartphone that matches the biggest PC and console titles. And it's totally free. The game features an engrossing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize, which you can see here. Raid's special launch tournament is happening right now and growing in popularity by the day, so go to the description of this video and download Raid only through our special link to get 50,000 silver immediately. And here's the coolest part. You'll also be automatically entered into their special launch tournament, where you can compete with us and other players for crazy in-game prizes and physical prize packs. Winners will get them delivered straight to their house. Good luck and see you there. Medieval Torture Devices the rack. The rack was first officially used as a form of torture in antiquity during pre-Hellenic times and in the early medieval period. It has often been claimed that the rack was first used in ancient Greece to torture slaves and non-citizens. In 356 BC, the historian Herostratus was subjected to the rack in order to force a confession for the burning down of the temple of Artemis at Ephesus. The rack was also employed by Alexander the Great in 328 BC to torture those who conspired against him in an assassination plot, including his court historian Callisthenes. However, while these stories exist, it is often contested whether this torture device was used at all in classical Greece or in ancient Rome. It's because of this lack of proof that the origins of the rack can only concretely be traced back to Anglo-Saxon England and the European continent during the Middle Ages. The rack itself was a large wooden frame either elevated off the ground and placed horizontally or propped up at almost a 90 degree angle. These rollers were attached to levers or wheels which if pulled would stretch the limbs of the victim until they either couldn't take it anymore or until their limbs were dislocated from the rest of their body. One very gruesome aspect when they were stretched beyond their limit was the loud popping noises made by snapping cartilage, ligaments or bones. In different countries, modifications were made to the rack to enhance its damage to the victims. In particular, France added spikes to the planks which the victim would be supported on, causing them to be pierced in the back as they were stretched. While the victims were confined on the rack, they would also be subjected to other forms of torture, such as burning or having their nails forcibly removed from their fingers and toes. The rack was used most often to torture individuals into answering questions asked of them by their captors. Use of the rack increased in frequency during the Middle Ages around the time of the Inquisition. The Catholic Church held a large amount of power on continental Europe during the Middle Ages and it was Pope Lucius III who first sent inquisitors in search of heretics. The systematic rooting out and punishment of heretics began in the late 12th century with the persecution of the Cathars in the south of France and several other heretical groups. A forerunner to the Spanish Inquisition was introduced in the Kingdom of Aragon in the 13th century. The rack was used by the inquisitors in an attempt to force confessions of heresy. As the inquisitions reached their peak, torture became routine practice, especially during the Spanish Inquisition, which began in 1478. While early inquisitors were agents of the Pope, the Spanish Inquisition was under the direct control of the monarchs, Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabel I of Castile. The rack was often used in England from the 15th through the 17th centuries. Its first appearance in England is said to have been due to John Holland, second Duke of Exeter and Constable of the Tower. Under the Tudor and Stuart monarchies, the use of torture, including the rack, increased as it was justified in the case of treason trials. Some of the most prominent rulers who employed the rack as a torture method included Mary I, also known as Bloody Mary, Henry VIII, and Elizabeth I. The Tower of London was known as the center of British torture and many were tried on the rack, also known as the Duke of Exeter's daughter within the confines of that historic site. The only woman to be documented as being tried on the rack in the Tower of London was Anne Askew in 1546. Anne was a supporter of Martin Luther and his Protestant ideals, and was imprisoned on charges of spreading Protestant beliefs. Even though Anne was so badly tortured on the rack that she was not able to walk afterwards, she never surrendered her faith. She was later condemned to death for her Protestant faith and burned at the stake. 
Guy Fawkes was the most famous victim of the Tower of London. He was thought to have been tried on the rack after the failed gunpowder plot of 1605 as a last resort, as the lesser tortures were not successful in forcing a confession. After suffering on the rack multiple times, Guy Fawkes finally confessed and gave the names of his accomplices. The torture was so terrible that Fawkes fainted before he was able to sign his name to the confession. When he was finally brought to consciousness and gave his signature, he was condemned to death and executed. Fox was supposed to be hanged, drawn, and quartered, one of the slowest and most painful executions implemented in the late Middle Ages. However, when he was brought to the noose, he was able to jump from the platform with enough force to successfully break his neck and end his suffering. Yet, that did not stop his executioners from drawing and quartering his dead body. A form of the rack persisted in Russia until the 18th century. In different countries, the rack was gradually replaced by a host of less barbarous and cruel forms of punishment for crimes great and small. Subscribe for more history videos.